Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring Cultos Innombrables. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, featuring this Spanish role-playing game, where you play as the Mythos cultists instead of the investigators, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about the ambience chapter. Well, it's ambientación. Ambientación can be interpreted as atmosphere, the ambience, the setting, but I will refer to it as ambience for simplicity's sake. This chapter is mostly for those that do not know much about the mythos. They talk about Lovecraft and the creation of his universe or cosmology. In Lovecraft's time, there were many changes. There were restrictions. There were clear societal roles. When it comes to popular science, many theories were coming in and out. So Lovecraft weaved everything together in his stories. Many things related to the mythos, to the way that humanity perceives the universe, has to do with this space and time conception. There are many weird things that perhaps humans are not aware of. And so the mythos plays with that idea. It is a dread or a fear based on what is unknowable, on what we have been ignoring because of our limited human mindset. So this is all about Lovecraft's vision, fear of the unknown. And there's also good advice and information on how a player character may learn about the mythos and how the occultists, rather in this role-playing game, are focused on wielding the power of the mythos and using those eldritch abominations in their own rituals and workings to achieve their goals. This is very different from the steadfast investigator in the typical Call of Cthulhu role-playing game, where the characters almost want nothing to do with the mythos as they are trying to stop that threat. But in the Cultos Innombrables experience, you are wielding the powers of the mythos as your weapons and perhaps as your shields as well. The player characters usually learn about the mythos by studying ancient tomes, but because this is a modern setting, maybe they learn of the mythos through the internet, through different devices and shady downloads. So it's all about that. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to continue with this ambience chapter. I think that this section does an excellent job of introducing the players and the game master to the mythos. Because there could be some people that have just read a couple of Lovecraft's stories, or maybe watched a few movies that serve as references or tributes to the mythos. But this chapter really gets you into the core of the mythos. It really gets you into what Lovecraft wanted to communicate in order to run a game or to participate as a player character. Thank you for watching this part of the review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Thank you for your likes and your comments. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.